Hello everyone and welcome to Josh's Corner. In today's video we're going to be talking about laser light transfer papers. If you've ever spoken to me in person or you know seen me in a trade show you know I can't stand laser light papers. Um, single step papers just you know I'm just not a fan of them. But today's video, we're going to be doing, not just doing a single brand, we're going to be doing multiple brands of laser light papers in the hopes that I can find one that I do like. Uh, and we're going to be using the HP M254DW because we know all of these papers work inside of a nice printer like an Oki or a Uninet. Um, but we don't know if they work in these cheap printers that like say maybe Ghost uses. All right, of these nine laser light papers that we're going to be testing, eight of them are going to be using the single step method where you just print and press, and then one of them is a two step laser light paper. You can see more about them in the video description down below, uh, or you can just skip ahead. Whatever you want to do, uh, you can do that. But I'm also, because I haven't tried it yet, I'm going to be doing some chroma blast prints uh, just so that I can use some of the ink so I can hurry up and switch it to a sublimation printer. All right, now that we've got all that out of the way, let's go ahead and pay the cat tax with Mr. Kitty and get started. So today's paper that we're going to start with is the Parapy. But before we start with that, it's very important that we set our printer to the correct media settings so that this doesn't happen. It's going to slow the transfer down and allow the toner time to fuse to the glossier type of media that we're using. And to do this, we're going to go inside the printer's system setup menu uh, on the front of the printer and uh, we're just going to move it over to the right and select setup and then inside the setup menu we want to go to system setup and then we're going to do a little inception and go on a menu inside a menu and select paper setup and then inside that menu you want to select default paper setup and then you want to select your paper type and that's going to be heavy glossy and four menus later we can select our paper and there we go also, you can change your default paper size. I'd go ahead and do that. Letter, illegal, A4, whatever floats your boat. It'll save you some time in the long run. All right, everyone, say hello to the reason we're here, Parapy Laser Light. Hey! On Wednesday, I had a customer reach out to the support agent that they were having issues getting the paper to transfer over. Uh, so I offered to try it out myself because I have used this paper a long time ago, but I wanted to give it a go again and document it here and I told her that I would share it with her. So here's where we are today, and I'm printing the paper on the you know heavy glossy setting, and then I'm gonna be pressing it at 340 degrees Fahrenheit for 25 to 30 seconds with heavy pressure, and then it's gonna be a warm peel, and this is what gets most people, and myself, as you're gonna see, ah, warm peels. Nothing like putting a little guesswork in each and every press. Anyways, <laughs> Now, let's go ahead and move on to the actual press. As you can see, uh, I have all the pressing information in the top right hand corner, so that'll save us some time and you don't have to hear me repeat it over and over in this video. All right, so here we are with our first peel on our first attempt. I'm gonna start with the bottom right hand corner and what you're gonna see when I do start with the bottom right hand corner is that I'm gonna run into an issue immediately. I didn't get a full transfer. So feeling kind of bad, maybe I need to start from the top. And so I'm gonna start pulling from the top. But check out my shoulder here. Isn't that a great view of my shoulder? <laughs> Anyways, here's the transfer. You can see I didn't get a full transfer from the top or the bottom. Maybe I waited too long. Maybe, you know, I wasn't fast enough. So with this second one, I'm actually going to let it cool down for a bit and then try it. I removed it from the pressing peel and, you know, let it get nice and you know maybe about 20 25 seconds and then peeled and as you can see absolutely barely anything transfers over to the t-shirt so here we go with our third attempt so to make sure i get the best transfer possible i'm going to preheat my press pillow uh, and also my t-shirt nice and well before i do it and then i'm going to press it you know for the required time and then i'm going to wait about five seconds give it a peel and you know I'm going to get rid of the press pillow because I think that's causing some inconsistencies. Uh, so, you know, we're going to remove that, give it a shot, and, you know, hopefully get some better results. So the first thing I want to do when I'm going to prepare for my next press is make sure that the heating pad or bottom plate of my heat press is heated up nice and firm, and then I'm going to press it. And when I do peel it this time, 
I'm going to get a much better transfer, but unfortunately, you're really only going to get my shoulder for the peel, but uh, I'll post it up right here and you can see I got a much better transfer. Most of the center is there, but I am missing a little bit of it from the top and from the bottom. So we're going to do one more press and before I peel this one, what I'm actually going to do is wipe it down with say my hat. Uh, you can use a washcloth, whatever, or a t-shirt and then I'm going to peel it and hopefully that gives me some better results and I feel like it gives me some better results because everything starts to you know look a little bit better the only problem is like near the bottom when I first start my peel it doesn't fully transfer and I seem to have this repeat I get a good transfer when I do it the sixth time here and this is gonna be my best one now I probably have a tiny little bit the bottom that doesn't transfer but not enough to where you're gonna notice anything so there's my crowning achievement after six transfers. But I'm a little bit worried about consistency or what if, you know, I'm doing something other than, you know, just this color. So I printed out eight more, I printed out eight more prints and I'm going to press them onto a shirt and show you those right now. Even though the last two presses had minor flaws with them, even after all those finishing presses, I was still able to peel off the release liner easily and the toner, as you can see right here. So I didn't think I know what to do with this paper. All jokes aside, it's just not a very good paper, especially if you're wanting to do, you know, anything that you're going to be selling. Uh, because, you know, it's just the release liner, it sticks, and, you know, if you've got anything in between different spots, sometimes, you know, you're going to have some edges where it's not perfect. And also, the release liner doesn't actually go all the way into the shirt, so it can kind of come up, as you can see right there in the center. Now, you might also be saying, but Josh, you said that we would be printing eight shirts. Well, actually, I t printed nine and the other three transfers were from the design from earlier and because I, I wanted to see if I can get consistent results and I consistently failed on all three of them as you can see in the pictures here. I didn't film it because uh, I felt that I had filmed enough of this transfer so moving along the next paper is the Parapy Laser Light 145 premium <laughs> transfer paper and uh, this paper um, it's a laser light paper but quickly, I want to talk about the back of it, what's on it here. You remember earlier I talked about, you know, making sure you set the correct media settings. Well, I didn't run a few transfers through it. This is the first transfer I ran through after I had that happen. So what you're seeing is some of the leftover toners on the back. Uh, it's not going to affect my transfer. So it's really just going to affect the sheet that I put over the back of it. So, you know, if you don't want to ruin, you know, whatever sheet, uh, like a uh, parchment paper or whatever, then don't do it and reprint, but I don't care. I have plenty of parchment paper. So once we peel off the press, you know, well, I just wanted to show you. See, it'll ruin your parchment paper. But once you peel the press, uh, you're supposed to wait five seconds. Um, but uh, I had a good transfer here. But the thing about this paper is the entire release liner transfers over. So you get a weird waxy feel. And then I'm going to show you some pictures in just a second, but you'll notice right here that the release liner didn't go down all the way. That's because, you know, I had the edge of the shirt and so it didn't let the, you know, it didn't have the pressure evenly uh, because, you know, it wasn't pushed all the way down. But you'll also notice in the release liner that stuff kind of gets stuck in it. You'll see it in the bottom left hand of the picture. There's a bunch of like black fibers there. Uh, it got that from, you know, whenever it laid down on a table. And then I guess I pressed it, the second one, and yeah. So downside of that. Uh, so if you know that's a paper you're interested in, there's no instructions to contour cut it. Uh, so it's going to leave that release liner anywhere. So keep that in mind if you're going to be using that uh, Parapy 145 laser light paper. Next up, we have the Nina Technoprint Easy P 
uh, and this is a single step paper for light t-shirts as well and this is pretty much going to perform exactly like the CL145 that I just did um, except it's got a thinner paper and because of that thinner paper uh, on my second press here I had it kind of tear off and you know stick to the shirt but you know I got a complete transfer on it so that's that um, it's not you know, it's going to perform just like that other therapy paper. Uh, you're going to apply it at a little bit higher temperature, um, but you know you can clearly really see that the you know, the entire everything transfers over. You have the release liner, so you're going to feel that on your shirt. Uh, you know, so keep that in mind if you're going to be using this paper. The entire release liner will transfer over uh, when pressed to a shirt, and that will have a certain hand to it or feel. Uh, whatever your terminology is all right so fair warning with this next paper I have used it a fair bit and I've already made a video about it this is the Nina laser light it's a two-step paper so of course I like it oh you print on your a sheet and then you press the B sheet to it which has the adhesive attached but uh, if you want to see more about it then you can you know click the link in the uh, video description down below or right up above um, in this little bullet point or whatever they call it but anyway, you're going to press it here for 30 seconds to the shirt at 375 degrees Fahrenheit, and then you're going to pull it over to the right side, uh, or at least I am, I'm going to pull it over to the side so that it can cool down before I peel it. And um, once it's cool to the touch, then you want to start your peel, but you sh what you I should have done before I pressed it I was trim around the edges just in case there was any extra adhesive, because when you're going to see, like when I'm doing the end of my peel here, uh, you know, it's going to get stuck on the side and, you know, it's going to make my peel a little bit hard. But I still got a perfect transfer all the way and there's no adhesive liner or anything left where there's no toner. So it's got a nice feel to it. So um, great transfer, really easy to use. And I highly recommend this paper. But then again, you know, um, you know I'm biased because I like two-step papers. So, you know, take that uh, as you will. Uh, but let's move on to the next paper. So the next two papers we're going to be looking at are both going to be from Forever. The first one is going to be the Forever Classic Universal, but uh, in this video you're seeing down right now that's sped up. Uh, it's basically me trying to get it to print for a couple of times, and uh, I can't get the Forever Classic Universal to print no matter what a type of media type settings I put it on. Uh, it just jams up. Uh, it doesn't seem to you know pick up no matter what tray I put it in and you know uh, it's yeah so I gave up so I wasn't able to get it to work in this printer um, and I spoke with uh, Christopher over it forever and you know he said yeah it's not those papers aren't really gonna work use the forever laser dark um, um, so uh, even though he told me that about you know both the forever classic universal and forever laser light I still wanted to try it and I could get the Forever Laser Light to print, but uh, unfortunately, it's uh, a warm peel, and I'm running out of shirts. So as you can see, I had this one transfer here, and uh, you know I wanted to make sure I had enough, uh, you know, shirts to do the rest of the transfers because I did. A, <laughs> I'm running out of white cotton shirts, uh, so um, I want to get this video out. So I'm only going to do one transfer with the Forever. It's a warm peel, um, and you know. It's going to be in the same, kind of like the uh, Parapy, uh, you know, trim free because, you know, it's not going to leave the adhesive liner where there's no toner. It's just, you know, it only activates wherever the toner is. Um, but, uh, yeah, um, it doesn't look like, you know, I'll be able to test it right now, but uh, we'll do another video on that some other time. Next up is a paper that I have worked up uh, with a little bit, and that's the Uninet iColor One Step Speed Transfer Light Transfer Paper. That's a lot of words. I added an extra transfer in there too. Uh, but you know, it's a great paper. Uh, the only downside to it is is that it does leave the release liner wherever the paper was, so you are going to feel that. However, compared to the other papers that have done that today, this one is a little bit thinner, and again, it's a hot peel. Uh, so I was able to get a perfect transfer. Uh, the first time and so I didn't have to try again uh, because you peel it immediately uh, and it comes right up as you're gonna see here 
So if you are going to go with a paper that is going to leave the film behind, uh, I would suggest this one because it's a hot peel and you can you know, get a better transfer every single time and not have to worry about messing up your shirt. Although it is going to leave that liner, um, but you know, if you're going to use a paper that's going to do that, this is the one I'd recommend. All right, this next paper is the iFactory transfer from Europe, and uh, it is a laser light paper, um, and it was sent to me with a bunch of other papers that we're gonna test, and it's actually a hot peel too. It reminds me a lot of the UniNet paper. Uh, it's got the same type of film and everything, uh, and you're gonna peel it away, um, but uh, yeah, it came to me in a larger size, so if it looks like the edges were uneven, it's because I had to cut them with scissors, so that's why but it does leave a residue wherever the you know paper was because that release liner is transferring over to the shirt. So keep that in mind. But I did get a nice transfer with it the first time uh, with ease, uh, but you will see that that uh, release liner transfers over to the shirt, just like uh, the UniNet paper. All right, next up we have a paper that was sent to me from Taiwan from ATT Transfer. And this one is a warm peel paper. This was actually the first one I pressed, the last one to print, first one to press, because it has the lowest application temp time, or application temperature. So uh, when I did press it, I pressed it to the shirt, and uh, it's gonna be for 45 seconds. And then you're gonna do a warm peel 20 to 30 seconds afterwards. I waited 30 seconds. Um, but you know, there's the instructions right there. And I actually had a successful transfer. Now, I wasn't given very much of this to sample, so I was going to do some more to see if it was consistent, but I'm actually going to take it over to um, our lab, our lab, or our testing department, and that way we can do some more testing on it and see if it might be something uh, that we might be interested in carrying. So I'll maybe I'll have a video on that later, so we'll see. And that is actually going to cover all of our laser light papers so far today. So uh, next, we're going to take a quick look at Chromablast uh, because it does leave a film uh, similar to some of these laser light papers, but it requires you to do a contour cut, and I need to use some of the ink. So let's go ahead and show that real quick, and then we'll end the video. All right, so what is Chromablast? Chromablast is a uh, ink that uh, you use with a sawgrass printer, an SG400 or A800, that only works with white 100% cotton, and uh, it kind of transfers a film wherever the transfer paper was over to the paper uh, but you can use it with contour cutting uh, I will however say though um, that film is pretty thick so I'm not a fan of it so that's why I'm gonna try and see if I can switch this machine over to sublimation so you know we can go ahead and end the video right here uh, the chromoblast transfer worked um, you know the color was a little bit different compared to everything else but I was able to get a successful transfer but I hated the feel of it I also didn't contour cut uh, I'll do another video on chrome blast later but that's gonna pretty much cover our laser lights um, you can see there's a big variety out there a lot of them kind of do the same stuff but you've got warm peel hot peel my personal opinion is to go with either the two-step with the Nina laser light or going with a uh, you know a hot peel like say the UniNet or possibly this uh, other paper that from Spain that we might be checking out or if you want something that doesn't have a uh, feel to it then I would strongly suggest going with that UniNet because you can see some of those other warm peel ones you're gonna have an issue with if you can figure it out uh, and you've got it down to a science and you can get it right every time please you know put something in the comments tell me how you do it I'm very interested to see if you know maybe I'm doing something wrong and I'm very interested to see how everybody else is doing it too. So thank you again for watching this video. Uh, sorry it's a long one, but uh, you have yourself a wonderful day. We will be doing a laser dark one. I've got a trade show coming up next week in Long Beach, California, so uh, I won't be posting anything next week. But, uh, you know, keep that in mind. But I will be posting something very soon. I'm trying to keep this uh, active, and we're going to keep this rolling. Uh, have yourself a wonderful day.